Hey everybody, it's Jasmine. So today I wanted to do a review on the Juno & Co sponge. Uh, the company sent me this sponge, but they're not paying me to do this review. They don't even know I'm filming this review. Um, so they sent this to me to just try out and see how I like it. And so I touched it and it just feels and looks like velvet. I'm going to show you guys real quick. It just looks very hairy and it looks very interesting and so this is the Juno microfiber fusion sponge this sponge retails for four dollars which is actually not that bad it says the first ever microfiber makeup sponge fuses together your favorite makeup tools the beauty sponge and makeup brush this ultra soft dual layer sponge saves you 50 to 70 percent of your makeup product and perfectly blends in everything all caps everything if you're looking at this shape it has a very uncanny resemblance to the Fenty sponge. Mm -hmm, I have the sponge. This one is $16, so that's four times more the amount that this costs. And you can see the Fenty one is a lot smaller. I didn't um, clean this Fenty sponge just because I wanted to show you guys what it looked like dry. I am going to wet both of these sponges and I'm going to apply my foundation with the sponges on each side just so you guys can see the application. and. I was debating whether or not I should have done this with my Wonder Blender, but since the shape is very similar, I wanted to put these two to the test. I'm back from wetting these sponges and it's really weird because the Juno sponge is so dense. Like, it just feels like there's something in the center and it takes a while to kind of get back to its shape. And then the Fenty one is really, really squishy. I'm using my Tarte Shape Tape and I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this on both sides over my pimples. And I'm just going to kind of let that sink in for a minute. Um, I'm gonna actually speed up the process by fanning my face. Mm -hmm. And I've only used the Fenty sponge once, which is why you haven't seen me review it or really talk about it. So, um, so far, so good. It's blending out like a regular sponge, like not that big of a difference. Um, I don't want to give you guys my first impressions just yet, but, um, it's interesting because it definitely, I could see why I'm saving product, but this sponge actually, cause like velvet, there are little hairs, so... I don't know if I'm supposed to be like blending this in like this or pouncing it into my skin. So far, if I'm being honest, I like the Fenty side a little bit better. All right, now for foundation, I'm just gonna take my NYX Total Control just because it's the only one that matches me right now. <laughs> and so I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this how I normally do. Oh my God, I already got some on my chin. <laughs> so I usually do two on the sides of my face and then two dots on my forehead. I'm gonna leave majority of my nose exposed so we could see what the Juno side looks like. I just think the Fenty sponge feels like your typical sponge. Like I'm not a user of the Beauty Blender anymore just because I'm a tried and true with my Shop Miss A Wonder Blender. But this one actually is really soft and it doesn't leave my skin looking very porous because sometimes I feel like the Beauty Blender can have too many pores in it and then when I pounce my foundation in like this it kind of gets stuck in the pores and it kind of translates on the skin. So this side is really nice and smooth and it's giving me what I was just talking about. It's giving me a little bit more texture um, it's probably harder to see just because foundation is so close to my skin tone. The sponge shape itself is actually not that bad. Um, I actually like this shape, so, I mean, it's kind of up to you, like, if you were eyeing the Fenty sponge. I like it because both of these have, like, this little 
dome shape at the top. This is what the Juno side looks like as compared with the Fenty side. I mean, still not bad, but I mean, I don't really know how to put words together right now because it's almost like it's not wanting to really mesh into my skin. So the Fenty side really just like sunk everything in and then this one kind of looks, it looks blended, but at the same time if I'm like looking like really close to my skin into this mirror, it just looks like it's more sitting on top of my skin. So I'm gonna try, <laughs> I'm like trying to like blend it out like with the little hairs. Maybe, maybe, I don't I'm gonna use some more Tarte Shape Tape. I'm using a lighter color. This is just going to highlight my face, um, especially towards my under eye area. The other side just like swooshed out and evenly distributed. And then this side kind of just takes a little longer. I think my concern now is how my under eyes are looking. Um, I think that this one just looks brighter in my opinion. Like I use the same amount on both eyes as you guys saw, duh. But I just feel like there's a lot more shadow on this side and I just feel like it's just because of the way it blended. Um, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. I'm using a lot of cream products today, so I'm gonna grab a cream contour, and I think that should, that should, you know, emphasize how well these two blend, just because cream contours are pretty harsh. So I'm just taking a stick that I honestly don't care about. I just don't feel like taking out my Anastasia palette, but I am gonna do my jaw, which is something I normally do not do. So you know what? I'm not going to finish this whole side first. I'm just actually going to show you side by side what these look like. So you guys can just get an instant comparison between the two. So definitely for the Juno sponge, I'm finding myself having to swipe with my pounces as opposed to this one where I don't have to. I literally just pounce it in. This side I'm definitely getting more coverage, for sure. I'm like looking at it in the viewfinder and I'm also looking at it in the mirror. And just patting it like this does not do it any justice at all. Like I find myself just sweeping a lot. Although I do have to sweep on this side, it doesn't look as patchy. Which is actually a lot better. This side, it's pretty patchy. This side just looks really good. I'm gonna take a cream blush. So I have the Super Shock Cheek by ColourPop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the butt of the sponge and kind of just twirl it in and then just pounce it in. This one's actually a really light color. So you're not really gonna see like a huge color payoff but you are gonna see some shine from the blush, which is actually what I really enjoy. Ooh, this one picked up a lot of color. Whoa, I should have done comparisons. Okay, wait, let me let me redip the Fenty. I redipped the Fenty and the Juno sponge, and you can see that the Juno sponge just gets a lot more of that glitter pigment, and that's actually crazy. I'm pretty sure it's because of those little hairs. Whoa. It also applies a little, like, what is, what is this, splattery? I don't, oh, honey, no, oh, no, mm -mm. no, no, you did me so dirty right now, you did me so dirty, oh, hey. Hell no. Oh, I am not walking out the house like this. Are you? No, 
Are you kidding me? And plus it emphasized so much texture. Uh, it emphasized so much texture. Are you kidding me? What? I'm taking the clean side and blending it out. What? I am upset. So I'm going to be using this new highlight that I got. It's a little sample. It's by Becca. It's a shimmering skin perfecter. Okay. I'm going to apply it directly on my cheek. I'm going to take this side of the sponge and I'm going to blend it out. Highlights blend beautifully on both sides. Um, I think the blush application just messed me up. So I'm actually going to go in with some powder just because I forgot to do that earlier. I'm going to drag the powder under my contour just so I could see where I'm at, how it's doing. And so I'm just going to take my RCMA No Color Powder and I'm going to use my flat side of the sponge to just carve it out. So the Juno side, as predicted, picks up a lot of powder. When you are applying product directly on the sponge as opposed to on your face, you're going to get a lot more color payoff when you use this sponge. Um, so be warned of that. When you already have the product sitting on your face and then you blend it out, everything's fine. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wear this throughout the day and I'm going to come back at the end of the day to give you my final thoughts on this sponge. And initially you guys saw that this side packed on a lot of powder and a lot of blush and on this side everything just looks very seamless and blended out. And I kind of think that for the difference of the sponges since I feel like this is more of like a velvety sponge. Oh, that's another fun fact that I want to share with you guys. So it says online that... Um, microfiber is very similar to velvet. It says that they're made with minuscule polyester fibers and that is typically like suede or velvet. So they're similar materials. Um, and I just thought that since this picked up a lot of powder, a lot of blush, maybe you want fuller coverage. So maybe you would lean towards the Juno and Co sponge, but maybe you want more of a skin like finish. And then you would probably prefer like the Fenty sponge or a beauty blender or even the Shop Miss A Wonder blender. I personally want to try this sponge out more. I think that for $4, it's pretty okay. And I think today was it was an okay makeup day. I mean, I don't think that this side versus this side looks that much different. I just think the application was a little bit different for me, but in the end, I got to where I needed to be. I think I'm going to test this out a little bit more, and you'll probably see me using it in upcoming tutorials, but for now, that kind of is my first impression. So I hope you guys really enjoy this video, and let me know if you're interested in testing this out, because this is really interesting. So as always, I love you guys so much, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. Peace out, Girl Scouts.